Yeah, well, the, that fight was a dud. Exactly. Yeah. It was what I expected. So, a wipeout. Uh, the, what what I was saying, and 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 you know, people. This is where people call me a casual and crap like that. I've been watching MMA since 1993, since I was in high school. I was watching MMA. I watched the first UFC on pay per view for like thirty dollars at my house. So I watched it when they were people in four hundred pounds fighting out who's hundred pounds. Like I've watched it forever. So and I've trained in in, in jujitsu. So you can miss me with the crap about being casual. It wasn't about the fights. The fights specifically, I think a lot of the fights had no meaning. That's what I'm talking about. If I'm putting together the best card that I can put together, I'm putting together the best card I can put together that provides the most meaningful fights for the opportunity to, win, to get to fight cha for championships. Obviously, you cannot mm -hmm. put mm -hmm. every title on the line. It's impossible. The UFC fans are mesmerized and brainwashed by titles, which is why they'll have they'll all of a sudden have an interim title, even though there's a champion who just has an injury for a few months. And they'll create an interim champ, interim title fight like they did with John Jones and created that one they did last year because Jones got hurt or whatever. And like you create these belts and then they, well, that makes the car better. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's a fake belt. It ain't the real belt. And the BMF <laughs> isn't a real belt at all. So what you're sitting here telling me is that you create that fight. Look, I love the Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje fight for what it was. It was going to be a fun fight. Now that I think it would parlay into a title shot for Max against Ilya Taporia. No, because I thought he was going to lose. That's the main reason. But secondly, because I think Volkanovski should still get a rematch against Ilya Taporia because he was the five-time defending featherweight champion. And typically when you defend for that long, you get a rematch. Now, I'm not saying that I like that idea, like that situation. I don't like it. I think guys should have to earn their way back regardless. But historically, the UFC gives guys immediate rematches when they have three, four, five title defenses. That's not going to happen now because it seems like Max is going to get that title shot. And he looked absolutely fantastic. But the point of what I was saying was, one, the main event wasn't set until two months ago. If you look at other major cards, go look at UFC 1. UFC 1 drew 1 million pay-per-view buys. UFC 300 barely broke a million. UFC 100 was 15 years ago when UFC was not so acknowledged mainstream. It wasn't on ESPN. So it was a completely different demographic. And yet it drew 60% more in pay-per-view. Yes, were the ticket sales higher? Sure, because inflation makes ticket sales be sold for more money now. That is what it is. But don't sit here and try to, don't don't feed me a hamburger and call it filet mignon. I'm not dumb. And I think UFC fans should actually start using their brains and not just their emotions of saying, oh, there's 12 former or current champions. Who gives a shit? The opening fight was Cody Garbrandt and Devison Figueredo. Cody Garbrandt has not been the champion in eight and a half years. Who gives a shit? He was three and five in his last eight fights. He's now three and six. He got his ass kicked. Then they put on Jessica Andrade, Marina Rodriguez. It was a wipeout. Yeah, they made it a split decision. Andrade clearly won that fight. It wasn't a competitive fight. Holly Holm and Kayla Harrison. That was one that I really was surprised about. I was wondering what Kayla Harrison would look like with the weight cut. Not she made the weight cut. Time. She looked like she was going to die. But she's 42. So you brought in Harrison to fight home because you presumed she was going to win. But home was the same person that got rid of Ronda Rousey and overcame those judo tosses. What they want, what we all ignore, including myself, was that Kayla Harrison is way bigger and stronger than Ronda Rousey. She couldn't stop the judo toss. But what the fuck was Holly Holm thinking, acting like she was going to grapple with Kayla Harrison? She's a boxer. She should have been fighting at distance. She literally grappled with her on purpose. Once she did that, the shit was over. It was, an, it was another non-competitive fight. So you have a woman here who beat up a 42-year-old. Aljamain Sterling fighting Calvin Cater. Aljo's moving up to, to featherweight. He just lost the belt. He's on the prelims, which is insulting in itself. But he's on there because he's boring. He's boring. And you know what he did for 15 minutes, Nick? He hugged him. He literally wrestled for 15 minutes. He barely threw any strikes. Cater, I think, landed five punches in three rounds. And Cater is a guy who, when he fought Max Holloway, they had a slugfest. Holloway beat his ass, but Cater was fighting. Cater couldn't do anything. And Cater hasn't fought before this in two years. It's a wipeout. Now, one of the best fights of the night, which I expected to be, was Yuri Prohachka and Alexander Rakic. Fabulous fight. Rakic came out on fire. He was beating up Yuri's leg with kicks. I mean, unbelievable job. And Yuri is a zombie. 
He comes forward, forward, and he finishes Rockage in the second round. Until the Gaethje Holloway fight, that was the fight of the night. And realistically, still could have been the fight of the night. Because I thought overall, Max Holloway kicked the shit out of Justin Gaethje. Calling stuff fights of the night when someone gets their ass completely handed to them is a little hard for me. Because I thought Max Holloway won that fight probably four rounds to one. Maybe it's three to two. But the rounds that he won, he clearly won. They were not close. And the way he, I mean, look. Then you go into the main card and you're making people pay to go see Bo Nickel who's got three fights in the UFC fighting Cody Brundage. Like, this is a joke. You can't sit here with a straight face and tell me that fight should be on this card, let alone on the main card, at least. Cholos Oliveira, great fight with Armand Sarukian. It was a wrestling match. Armand Sarukian basically laid on him, and I thought Oliveira won the fight because he had two major submission attempts. I thought Sarukian went out late in the round three when he just completely flattened out. And it seems like Oliveira thought the same thing, but he didn't, and he gets the split decision when I thought Oliveira won the fight, but he didn't. Big fucking deal. But it wasn't some overly exciting fight then we get into Gaethje Holloway Gaethje looked like shit Gaethje looked like something was wrong and Max looked incredible I give Max he's a warrior I give him so much credit but I knew that fight would be an overall slugfest but Max really whooped his ass like if you remove the last 10 second knockout thing on the last second of the fight if you remove that it was a good fight it was a good fight was Was it the greatest fight I've ever seen fuck no it was the ending because you know what? Max Holloway's that type of guy where he's going to sit here and say, let's go right now. I'm giving you your last shot. You got 10 seconds to knock my ass out. And instead, he knocks Gaethje out. And Max has done that before in fights where he says, let's go. And they just start rock him, sock him, robot. That's all that was. Rock him, sock him, robot. You know? And But after that fight, what do you have happen? The energy of the arena goes like this. That should not have been your third fight. It should have been your co-main event, realistically. You put Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Zhanan. I mean, that was a wipeout too. Wei Li won that. She won the fight in the first round and then the second round. And then she won a decision. Because she choked her out in the end of the first round. The girl was out cold. She literally rolled off of her and they woke her up. And then the corner says, do you want me to wake her up? What? At first they thought she would, they were giving her smelling sauce. But apparently if you push the nose up in some direction, it wakes you up. I don't know how. Don't ask me. I have no clue. And then you get the final fight, which is Pereira and, and Hill. And I expected Pereira to knock him out. I said it last week. I said it in all of our videos. And he knocked him out with the first punch he landed. The first punch he landed. The first punch he landed. He clipped him with three knuckles of his hand. It wasn't even clean. And he knocked him. He put him on his ass. After getting a nut shot, says, no, no, I'm good. Glock out. Hammer fist. Good night. Three minutes in. And you're going to sit here and tell me that this is the greatest fight card ever? It's not. It wasn't put together well. It was put together, like I said, with duct tape. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.